decision making and in terms of taking time to take your decisions even though when it appears that the time is remarkably short and not much obviously in your hands and therefore to pace up in the latter stages of the business cycle is something to me encapsulates everything in this particular video an interesting scenario the, the coin has been tossed and smearing has the white pieces and amazingly enough Danny this is a repetition of what happened in Moscow the players were even after the first two games and now again Smirin has the white pieces as he did then Anand the black pieces but if Anand draws the game he wins the match that's right but Smirin has a time advantage as a one minute time advantage to compensate for that so it's all down to this game Smirin opens with his favorite e4 move and Anand playing symmetrically for the moment Smirin lashing out with his pawn so this is a typical opening that Anand uses He's, he's used it in many big time competitions, he's won a lot of games with it, and now just playing quickly, all he needs to do is draw and he'll move on to the next round. Kasparov awaits the winner. So that's a slight surprise, and I'm thinking about this move, slightly unusual. Now, what's he going to play? I've never seen a nine so uncertain, it's incredible. He's spending a lot of time on his clock, and you have to remember that he's spotting Smear in a minute, and for him to be thinking this deeply, and it's only like the fourth the fourth move on the board. It's incredible. Smear in playing very cleverly here. Now, what's he going to do? Not thinking. I think this is unbelievable. He's almost spent a minute, a minute, 20% of his time for four moves. It's incredible, the uncertainty of this strong player. He clearly is a bit off form. He better get back in form or he's going to be out of this competition. He's under four minutes now. It's crazy. What Come on. <laughs> Come on, Vishy. Make a move. Make a move. Madness. Come on. This is this is unbelievable. This this is shocking. I, I'm stunned to see it. He's thinking this long on, on, on this, the fourth move of the chess game analyzing what I do not know but Smirin has successfully thrown him off and now he's used a minute and 30 seconds to think about four moves this is completely ridiculous he's putting himself into a deep deep hole yeah I mean this this simple recapture of the pawn by white is a little bit unusual normally you attack this knight first having said that the position is fairly simple what is Vichy doing finally made a move I mean could it could it have been that dramatic I do not know what he was thinking about but it's certainly surprising he spent all that time and finally he's chased the knight although although he's renowned to be an incredible speed player we've seen him uncertain in this match he, he needs to get his form back and he's lost a lot of time in the clock and he needs to start whipping out some moves and finally he's pushed his pawn up and now he's beginning to play a little bit quicker the bishop attacking and now his knight has come out into the game and now he's speeding up the king is castled so this is a fairly well-known position um, but Anand has used almost two minutes to get there I, I don't, don't know what he was doing so the, he's played this way before this is a known theoretical position so Anand knows it very well but he's He's moving, he's used a lot of time on his clock, he's used a lot of time, and, and now he's under three minutes, and Smirin has not even used one minute. He's not even used 60 seconds on his clock, Anand already used about two, and two minutes, 15 seconds. So the time could be a crucial factor here. Anand's position is fine, very solid, reasonable, he has great experience with this opening, but he's down on time he's exchanging all pieces now his knight has to drop back and he's dropped back to the center the knight kicking at this bishop so let's let's suppose he wants to save that bishop well then he'll have to drop it back one square he doesn't want to do that he's left it alone Smirin increasing the pressure now this knight is stopping this attack down towards the king the queen and bishop in a very threatening battery down here so the pawn has come up He's taken. Oh, this is fantastic. He's taking this pawn. He's sacrificing a piece. And now, Smirin has collected another pawn. It seems as if he thought he was going to win this knight, but Anand has defended it quite simply with this bishop move, and maybe Smirin is going to be down a piece. Okay, but Smirin has two pawns for this piece, 
and he's, he's now got a third. So he has three pawns for the piece. That's compensation itself. I can't help but think, though, that Anand up a piece is a lot more confident. He's starting to move like his old self. He's gotten the challenge, and he's going to try to meet it, moving much quicker, moving his king now up that dangerous, deadly diagonal. He's put it in the corner, hiding it, and he has a piece. But as you said, Danny, three pawns for it is what White has. Yeah, but, I mean, I would still prefer, I would prefer White's position here, definitely. And at least Anand has something to go for now. It's fairly clear where his chances lie. So he's down on time, but he's got something to play for now. He's whipping off moves. There's suddenly a pause in the situation. Look at Smirin's bishop. Despite being a piece down, he has some healthy bishops sitting in the middle of the board, and he's attacking a pawn, and Anand has ignored it. This is why they call this a shootout. Both sides' guns come out blazing and now making sure that no attack happens and Anand has sacrificed the bishop in the middle but of course he would gain that queen and he sacrificed his his rook for the bishop and now he's attacking he's attacking a rook and a queen this is fantastic battle going on so here the reason he's done that is to trade off pieces there you go he's just trading more pieces off the board and it seems he's about to win not just one pawn but two he's ripping a rook no, in fact, he's only going to win one pawn, and he's up a piece. And, Danny, this is like a quick turnaround, and Anand is just up a piece. Okay, he's up a piece. But uh, he's oh, taking a pawn. Fantastic. And he's if, sacrificed his queen. Unbelievable pawn... sacrifice. Anand showing his form. So, at the start of this, Smirin had three pawns for the piece. Now he's only got one. Vichy Vish, has a clearly winning position here. Oh. The only problem is time. He has about a minute and a half to try and win this game. Smirin has over three minutes. And look at Anand display his skill, his accuracy, and his moves moving quickly, showing just why they consider him so fast and so rich a speed player. He's just moving quickly now. He's had a big disadvantage on the clock, but he's got an extra piece. But this, this is not over yet. This game is not over. Anand has only a minute and a half to try and win this game. Oh, but look at that position. The piece is all, oh, and he thumped that rope down with authority, and bam, he's ripped off all the extra points. He's just got a pass point, and look at him make a minute look like a year. He's ripped another point off the board. Anand coming back in. This game itself is a good example of some skills that uh, wouldn't have come to me earlier. Um, so that long think there. Um, was good because for one minute I, I can I'll tell you what happened for one minute his knight went back right after I played my move but it could have also captured my pawn and this is a very old game and I suddenly remember this game but I couldn't remember what the conclusion was whether it was good for white or black and so this move surprised me and I started to think on the face of it as he points out using one and a half minutes in a four out of four is insane but I've learned that uh, as much as is possible, it's better to uh, play with a calm frame of mind than not. So it is important, even if I had to invest some time there, to understand what I was doing, I, I, it was better not to bluff. Later on, um, the fast bits I did were easier because, first of all, I had no choice. <laughs> the clock was running down. Uh, but the position also didn't call for that. I didn't have that kind of doubt. But for some reason, at the very beginning of the game, he did something unexpected, and I, my mind went blank. I couldn't remember the simple conclusions, and so I needed time to calm down. That's probably one of the most important things. Um, that, though I know that lesson, it's not easy to apply it. There are many moments when I forget to apply it, because when you're tense or irritated or not fully in control of yourself, you won't be able to apply it. But if you can remind yourself with some cues, um, like, Time control finished, now get up, go have a coffee and come back five minutes later. Uh, that sort of cue if you have, it can help. Um, and mostly after that, it's this sort of thing, because I was already 25 and I was, that was uh, shortly before my match with Kasparov. Um, in fact, my next game was with him, my next thing, and I, I beat Kasparov there. Uh, so it was a very nice event. but. Um, after that, it's, it's basically remembering the things that you do wrong. And it's obvious, you, you know it. If during the game somebody asked me, oh, what you're going to do, is it wrong? I would think about it and say, yes, it is. 
the thing is more that when you are tense and nervous how do you impose uh, this correction on yourself uh, so some of the things I do one I mentioned I know that um, when the time control finishes so that is when you have finished a time control move 40 then you get an hour for the next time control so this is a moment when it is very important to break uh, to not sit at the board because as long as you sit from the board you are still connected to the game it is very important to get up and take a 5 or 10 minute break even waste those 10 minutes uh, you know have some juice or coffee or something sit there for a few minutes let your breathing calm down and then come back and I will tell you why it is because it is very important that uh, your, on move 41 you make the best move with the position you have after move 40 and there are all your emotions uh, you know you may have been better you may have been worse the game may have taken a lot of unexpected turns now is the moment to sweep it aside and start afresh as it were so that is very very important this is a very accelerated version of that skill but same idea I think 